afternoon. You're welcome to the news update on NTA Benin. I am Amuli Okolo. The Edo State Government has flagged off the second round of maternal newborn and child health week at Ego local government area. The deputy governor who described the health week as a platform to deliver significant health interventions for children reiterated government's commitment to prioritization of health care, infrastructure and social development. Udakobong Achibong has details. Maternal newborn and child health week which involves antenatal care immunization and nutrition has been put in place to enhance routine vitamin A services at primary healthcare centers and to improve percentage coverage needed to reduce child morbidity and mortality, build immunity of children as well as maintain their vision and growth. The deputy governor urged everyone to join in the fight by ensuring children between 6 and 59 months participate in the exercise. The National Primary Health Care Development Agency has remained dedicated to provide technical guidance to Edo State in order to shape delivery of comprehensive health intervention aimed to prevent, protect, and promote the life of our children, especially the vulnerable group. It is important that Caregivers should be well informed so that all eligible children are available for the exercise, both at the health centers and house outreach. It is on record that the those state nutrition indicators for under five between 2016 and 2021 put severe acute malnutrition at 33%, overweight 1.4%, underweight 10.2%, Wessing 6.6%, stunting 13.6%, growth monitoring and promotion 20.5%, the warming 16%, and vitamin A supplementation 16.6%. This is what the exercise seeks to tackle. At the primary healthcare agency, we have we are determined to address this, these trends in nutritional indicators through these years. Maternal and child health, new, maternal newborn and child health week, which aimed at raising the vitamin A supplementation and deworming from 16% and 16% to above 50%. is a gross, is a big, big leap we want to take. But with your support, as usual, we believe that we can attain it. We must work together for children and mothers to get immunized as at when due. Men are no say. So get children in the hand. When you get her ready, meal take her from. So men are try, men are they attend hospital. When all these immunization people reach your place, not drive them. The maternal newborn and child health week is biannual. In Benin, Udrakobong, Achibong, NTN News. The Benin monarch of II CFR says the brain drain in Nigeria's health sector is worrisome. This is in view of the persistent social care crisis in the sector. Obawari made this noon when the management of the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, UBTH, paid him a cutsy visit in his palace in Benin. Eugenia Ndubisi has the details. The Benin monarch predicted that if the numerous challenges facing the health sector is not urgently addressed, it could get to freezing point whereby access to quality health services becomes a mirage. The traditional ruler who spoke in Edo language expressed concern about most medical personnel leaving the country in droves, especially the best friends among them. He enjoined health workers to be patriotic while pledging his support for the management team of UBTH ahead of its Golden Jubilee celebration. <laughs> Oba Ewa II prayed for the management of the hospital for the wisdom in piloting the affairs and industrial harmony that exists in the institution. In Benin, Eugenia and we see NTA News.
And in politics, the need to strengthen elections in Nigeria through diaspora voting is now being advocated at all levels. Some electorate and politicians in Edo State who expressed their support for diaspora voting also called for enactment of laws to enable Nigerians living abroad vote in future elections. Jude Abugu reports. With estimated 17 million Nigerians living in foreign countries and more moving abroad, Nigerians no doubt are among the most traveled people in the world. Irrespective of number of years spent abroad, Nigerians still strive to be in touch with happenings at home. For instance, according to the World Bank, diaspora Nigerians remitted to $3.81 billion towards the growth and development of the country in 2021 alone. This, many believe, is enough reason for them to participate in nation's elections. If given the opportunity, that will help in changing the narrative in terms of the voting pattern. Because most of them, they will be willing to vote. And when they vote, they vote very, very well. Because they understand what governance is all about. By doing so, they too will be involved. They will be, they, they will be even be uh, in enthusiastic to come home to do more for their country. If there was anything the INEC could have done to make sure these people vote in that election, it would have been wonderful. Because they have a say in this coming general election. The current electoral law and the nation's constitution seem to be the major hindrances to diaspora voting in Nigeria. It has to be legislated. It's not something you just sit down and they assume it and they say execute it upon assumption. The act, the electoral act, has, is silent on it to the best of my knowledge for now. It has to be provided for. The constitution has to make provision for it. Although INEC and National Assembly had in different occasions expressed willingness to work towards this, the possibility of Nigerians in diaspora voting in 2023 elections is already ruled out. However, many Nigerians are anticipating that 2027 will be the year every eligible and willing Nigerian, irrespective of country of residence, will vote in an election. In Benin, Jude Abubu, NTA News. This news is live on our YouTube channel, NTA Benin. You can subscribe and be a part of the news online. And you can reach out to NTA Benin Newsroom on any breaking news and happenings in Edo State. The number to call is 53559648. You can also send WhatsApp messages to the same number. We'll take a break now. Please stay. We'll have more reports for you when we come back. National Population Commission Public Announcement. This is to inform the general public and all interested applicants that online application for the 2023 Population and Housing Census Ad Hoc Staff Recruitment has commenced. The application is open from 31st October to 28th December 2022. Eligibility. Applicant must be in Nigeria between ages 20 and 50. Possess the National Identification Number NIN and a valid phone number as well as email be able to read and write in English and have a minimum of SSCE. Be ICT compliant and have basic literacy in mathematics. To apply, click http colon slash 2023 census ad hoc recruitment dot national population dot gov dot ng. Note, application is free. Beware of internet fraudsters. The national population is providing demographic data for development planning. Let's be part of nation building. Be part of this opportunity to count yourselves by yourselves. The National Population Commission and Edo State Government have put modalities in place for the sources of the e-recruitment exercise. Let's play our own part. Hurry and apply now as portal closes on 28 December 2022. No late application please. Dr. Tony Ayejina, Honorable Federal Commissioner, National Population Commission, Edo State Announcer. You're welcome back. The Edo State High Court will on Friday, 23rd December 2022, proceed on Christmas and New Year Recess. A statement by the Chief Registrar, B.O. Sawaru, indicates that the recess, which is in compliance with the provisions of laws of the state, will end on Friday, 6 January 2022. 
The statement also adds that normal cut session throughout the state will resume on Monday, 9th January 2023. The Chief Judge Joe Archer wishes all members of the bench, bar and public a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. The statement concludes. Praises and testimonies characterized the Thanksgiving service held at Christ Supreme Intercessory Prayer Ministry, Benin City, as members and guests converged to give praise to God. Good luck and I reports that both the young and the elderly, including a 96-year-old, attended the service which had the theme, Make a Joyful Noise. <laughs> The year 2022 for many may not have been rosy, but for the members of Christ's Supreme Intercessory Prayer Ministry, year 2002 has been the year God showered members with blessings. Hence, they are here to return thanks to God, their Maker. Adorned in colorful attires, members paid rapt attention as they were captivated by the message titled essence of thanksgiving taken from the book of psalm 68 reminding the congregation of the goodness of god and the need to give thanks to him at all times As once Congregation dance with their proceeds to the altar. Both members and guests describe the encounter as fulfilling. Once you spend from January to December, at the end of the year, you say, God, thank you. None of our members die this year. None of our children die. None of our youth die. None of our women die. I'm so excited, sir. I prefer to celebrate Harvest than Christmas, so this is my Christmas. We pay not better. I do French church now. Not take how we make a year, but then error. Widows in the ministry were empowered with food items, while others received various gift items. <laughs> Prayers and supplications brought the service to a close. In Benin, good luck in any NT News. Now talking security, the use of fireworks, firecrackers and knockouts before, during and after the Christmas and New Year celebrations are completely banned. The ban is announced by the AIG Zone 5 Police Command Headquarters. In a statement by the Zonal Public Relations Officer for the AIG, Lawan Tanko Jimeta, the zone is mindful of the fact that these devices are explosives and by their very nature harmful and capable of disturbing the existing public peace and causing unnecessary panic within the neighborhood. Anyone or group found flaunting this order will be arrested and prosecuted accordingly. In the meantime, AIG Jumeta Tanko Lawan is assuring Nigerians in the zone of security of lives and property throughout the festive period. The statement says the zone has put in place adequate security measures to ensure heat-free and seamless yuletide while enjoining all to mark the season with moderation and remain security conscious. This is a news update on NTA Benin. It's time for another break. Please stay tuned. Times have changed. Things have to change. Selecting a candidate requires a man with passion and vision to serve differently. Owa Magbe Aswen wants a tenure that addresses the real and neglected concerns of Edo South. Infrastructure, jobs, empowerment for the youth, women and needing adults. The man we call DVD says it's time to serve differently. Vote for Edo South Welfare and Prosperity through effective and robust representation. Serving as a voice of the people is Honorable Valentine Owa Magbe Aswen. He is the popular choice. <laughs>
Vote him for Senator Do South Senatorial District in the 2023 elections. Vote APC. You're welcome back. Social dance in Edo State is not primarily for entertainment alone. It is a necessary condition to accord rites of passage to a diseased loved one. It was for this purpose that many gathered at the Red Cross Event Center, Benin City, to bid farewell to late Madam Rose Akube Aleke, the mother of the chairman NUJ Edo State Council. Dennis Temple reports. <laughs> It is indeed part of ceremonies which also mark the transition of the death to the spiritual realm. <laughs> Full of glamour, the people of Esan, the ancestral home of the Aleghe, as well as colleagues, friends and associates of Festus Aleghe, came to pay tribute to late Madame Rose Akobe Aleghe, who had passed on at the age of 76. Some of the guests, including the Zona Director of NTA Benin Network Center, who was represented, thank God for the remarkable life of the deceased. On behalf of the Zona Director, I commiserate with the family. I commiserate with our, our own uh, Aleke, the NUJ chairman. Some of us are senior to the mother, but because of the interest we have in his performance and to give him more impetus to perform. That is why we are here. The mother was a great woman when she was alive by bringing up a wonderful uh, children like Alenge and others. The social dance, which is in celebration of life, was spent by the deceased, is accompanied by music that comforts the deceased loved ones. We speak to all and all women in Nigeria, all and all women, to you know, to that line. Uh, pay attention to your children, raise them properly, so that when the time comes, they can do you proper honor. Her character, her life that she spent while on earth, is exemplified by this, the character and the, that is being lived by the son, Faisal Saleh. She uphold the good legacy that Mama left behind. Nobody can question God. It already happened. If you take it easy. For Comrade Festus Alenke and his siblings, the loss of their mother has created a vacuum in their lives. She was a very loving mother, very caring. I remember that she sold a rapper to pay my school fees at the point. Her words of wisdom, advice, and all that she gave to us is what we keep on remembering. It's a marriage son, I mean. He has never had trouble with me, nor anybody in the family. Described as a peaceful mother, late Madame Rose Akobe Alenge depicted the life of the virtuous woman. She was born in 1946 in Benin, Dennis Temple, and the News. We pray strength for the family to endure the loss. And that is how we end the news updates. Thank you for watching. Good afternoon. Speech Lab.